everybody. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We are going to be chatting about the favorites for October. <laughs> I feel kind of late on this one, but I definitely wanted to squeeze it in because I do have some products that I'm feeling very strongly about right now, and I wanted to share them with you. This month, I've got a couple of brush favorites to share, a foundation, some different lip products, mascaras, and um, a really great skincare thing that in the last couple of weeks has made a big difference for me. So I'm going to start off with a rediscovered foundation. We do have a lot of rediscovered in this video, um, but it's the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear. Um, this had been like an Emily Award winning foundation product in years past, and I think NARS has a lot of really good foundations. I like their new soft matte foundation. Their Sheer Glow is a quality product, um, but this has always been one that I've been very partial to. It does have a pump here. I wear it in the shade Vienna, and um, what I love about it is there's a thinness, but yet definitely a coverage level, but also it has kind of a natural look on the skin. It's sort of rare to achieve the coverage, but also have a finish that's very convincing, you know, very skin-like. But another thing on top of all that is I think it has really, really nice staying power on my skin. I'm a normal skin type. I don't feel like my skin always gives my products a huge challenge, like I'm not the greasiest person ever. I'm also not the driest. I am kind of maybe a middle ground that a lot of products might be created for. But this has always been really, really consistent for me with staying power. When you pump this out, it, they're very small pumps. So I use one pump and maybe like a little bit more. It's still a very minimal amount of product. I'll have to use this again for a little refresher, maybe in an upcoming Get Ready With Me or something, but it's a small amount of product. It's a pretty concentrated foundation. And then the coverage you can achieve with that small amount, the beautiful finish that it has. Again, staying power, it's just doing a lot of things really well. And if I'm not feeling like, okay, I want to be super matte today, I just want like kind of a natural radiance on the skin. This is really beautiful, but again, covers a lot up. So I use that and then uh, I guess it's the perfect time to bring in this guy. This has really come into the picture in the last uh, couple weeks here, this Real Techniques. It's called the Blend and Blur Foundation Brush. I've had this in my collection for quite some time. Um, I'm sure I did an original video on this brush more when it came out. Uh, but what's really nice about it, there are a lot of brushes in this style. There are a lot of brands that have duped the um, Artiste kind of paddle style brush. But I really like these because this particular one is not too huge, okay? So I use this for foundation. Obviously it is large. I mean, that is a kind of a characteristic of these kinds of brushes because you take a pass through and you've got very quick blending. Um, but there's also a taper down the side that I think should be noted. So like if I go like this with my finger, you can see that the bristles are tapered up around here, meaning if it kind of goes on its side a little bit, or if you turn it, if you're trying to get around some smaller contours, the ends of those bristles can carry product and can be effective blenders, you know? So I think that's really a nice quality here. And again, just a good size. If you're going to use this kind of brush, there are even larger options, but this is really, really workable for me for foundations. I've used it for thicker cream foundations. It works amazingly well with the new M Cosmetics cushion. Um, that's another one where I was like, oh, should I include that in the favorites? I really like that product. With that, you can check out my M Cosmetics video for a lot more detail, but we're talking about more of a um, thin, lightweight, ultimately I would call it like a medium coverage product actually, but really, really natural on the skin. But this is great with that kind of thin product or even something thicker. It's just like, I'm really enjoying <laughs> the evenness and the speed with which it blends. And also, it's a little friend here. You know, this is, I believe it's called a contour brush, but I use this one for concealer. So I've been taking that around and using, you know, minimal passes over the skin. I feel like I'm doing a lot less work, but I feel like the evenness of application and coverage is so, so nice. So it's a nice friend to this foundation, but it's good for many other ones. I want to talk mascaras for a minute. Um, this NARS Climax Extreme has really been a great one um, in recent weeks. If you look at my lashes now, um, I've got the Climax Max Extreme on them. I think it's a really nice mascara. I feel like it gives me a similar look 
to Superhero from It Cosmetics. I would say this might be a bit more weighty on the lashes, so it doesn't quite dry as quickly, and I think there's something going on there. I think when you put on It Cosmetics Superhero, it doesn't take a long time to build up. It also dries pretty quick, and I think therefore it locks in curl that you have put in the effort to do, you know, with your eyelash curler. I think it holds it better because it dries a little faster. Um, with this one, it's a little bit less quick to dry, and therefore it might mess with my curl just a little bit. But as far as length and volume, it's really, really a beautiful product. Um, but another cool favorite that I've had that is mega rediscovered here, this is the Estee Lauder Little Black Primer. Um, when we're talking about curl holding, when we're talking about underperforming mascaras, this is a, an amazing thing. I've had this product, I've used it up, I've bought it more recently. Case in point, if you go back to the video, and I'll link to it, where I used the Great Lash Mascara and I was trying to make it do better by using this underneath, and it was actually great. Like, <laughs> this product, you'll put it on, it's a black primer, and you won't feel like it's doing hardly anything. Like, you'll rake this through just your bare lashes, and it'll be like, okay, whatever. And then you take that mascara that you think has not been doing enough for you, and it builds up great. I don't really feel the need to use a lot of this, like, under a super Superhero or a NARS Climax Extreme, but I'll tell you another purpose that I feel like this has that I really never played with before, but I think it's kind of a nice protective topper, okay, on top of a mascara. Now, you'll really feel like it's not doing much to add to the look or change the look because that's just not what this product's about, but I've been putting it kind of like over top of my finished look, and you won't really see it like building in any volumizing way but I swear it's kind of a bit of a sealer. David, if you're watching this, maybe you can confirm or deny, but I think that there is kind of a staying power benefit with this. Even when I've just used it as a primer, I've sometimes felt like when it's time to remove everything, like the mascara that was on top and the whole mascara look is maybe a little bit more resistant to the removal. Not that it's really hard to remove, but you know what I'm saying? Like it helped the cling. And I think it may be useful as a little protective topper type deal too. So I just wanted to throw that out there. This is coming back into my world. I need to remember to use this more with those mascaras like a Great Lash if you happen to have that or anything where you feel like, yeah, it's a little too natural. It's not doing quite what I want it to do. Um, it kind of uh, texturizes the lashes in a way. It makes the lash something that can better grab onto whatever mascara it is. As far as lip products go, I mean, I feel like I've been saying this for really several months now. I've been drawn to the long wear products products. Um, I do love a comfortable balm, but I feel like I've really been reaching for the things that get me through the bulk of my day, that if I needed to throw a mask on top of it, it wouldn't uh, have any transfer or any weird like mess happening under the mask, you know? So I think we're in a time right now where the liquid lipsticks can really have their moment. One that I do love a lot, when I'm doing a warm look, I feel like I so, so gravitate to this, and it might just be because I'm keeping it out, like it's out here on my desk area all the time, but it's the Too Faced Melted Matte in Pumpkin Spice. So, for example, today I've got on a really warm eye look. I'm experimenting with a palette I'm probably going to review soon, but when it's a warm, reddish, rusty look like this, I think this kind of a lip looks so good with it, right? So I use this stuff a lot. I also love the melted mattes that are in the little Too Faced 4-pack. Um, that was definitely one of the highlights from Too Faced this holiday season, and a real highlight all around, I think, for holiday makeup. But my tip for application would be get it going on the bottom lip. Make sure there's not too much on the doe foot. You know, like this might be a situation where you can even get a little bit off. So we're talking minimal thinnest amount on the bottom lip. Then blot, go mm to the top lip, and then just simply smooth it out. Don't go back in for more, but just smooth out what's there. It's plenty pigmented. It's never going to look streaky, but the lighter the amount, the more even and consistent and nice the wear seems to look. And also the lighter the feel, the more comfortable the feel out of something that, you know, it, it's not a buttery, smooth, creamy lip product. Let's face it. We're using this for practical reasons, and I'm interested in making it feel as comfortable as it can be. So another thing to think about, too, before these liquid lipsticks is possibly exfoliating.
exfoliating your lips. Um, e.l.f. Lip Exfoliator is a great product to make sure you're working on top of the smoothest canvas that you can. Um, also think about at nighttime, really treating your lips with a nice luxurious balm. Maybe it's Laneige. Um, e.l.f. has a nice uh, CBD lip oil type product. It's really great before bed. And making your lips kind of as healthy as possible can make some of these long wear products, I think, even more uh, pleasant throughout the day. But here's another thing. I feel like I've always said, oh, the Super Stay Mattings, that's as long wearing as it gets. And I do believe that. Um, I don't think that these ink crayons are quite quite up there with these. Like, I think they're approaching it, but there's something about the texture of this product that doesn't get quite as hardcore as these. But I do want to acknowledge that they are really strong. On Halloween, uh, when I did the girls' makeup, and I'm not like doing their makeup all the time, but this was for fun, and um, I put on this hot pink. What is this color anyway? Uh, treat yourself a really pretty bright pink and they wore this and I'm, we're talking kids here they're eating candy they're talking they're rubbing they're just like uh, completely unaware of the makeup that's just been done you know they're just living life and it lasted so well they continued to have a flawless lip like all night so I thought that was really nice um, and, but a more everyday shade that I feel like I'm reaching for is called lead the way so lately it's sort of been for me a story of this is my warm lip and this is my little bit cooler lip or a little bit softer, more neutral lip. But this is a brilliant color because, I mean, it's kind of light, but it still wears really well. Sometimes we think, well, only the deep, rich, we think those kinds of shades are the only things that are going to give us the best staying power. But this can hold on and it holds on very well. I think it's not quite to the extent of this format from Maybelline, but it really is close. And these are creamy, like they're a small crayon product. You put them on, they feel thinner than you'd expect, okay? So you kind of got to let go of the expectation of lipstick when you put these on. They do thin out. They're a really nice formula, and then they kind of set. So there's maybe a little less fussy application style here going on that you might prefer over the liquid lip, but I got to give credit where credit is due. These are really, really strong staying power, and it is the kind of thing I want to be reaching for. Now, finally, we're going to get to the uh, skincare thing that has been working so well. Uh, in a recent video, I was kind of complaining about some little bumps that I was having. They were like non-zits. They were little texture looking things that I could really see under my makeup. And they were happening like kind of right in the center of my forehead. And I had mentioned how I like messed with one. I tried to like pop one. Um, it didn't really seem to do anything but leave a little mark there for a while. You know, not really a good idea. Um, and a lot of you commented that you thought that was milia there on my skin. And some of you go to a dermatologist and you have that removed. Just these little bumps that look like texture on the skin. I really don't have a lot of that anywhere else. Some people talk about seeing it a lot um, on their under eye area. And I think in a very tiny way, maybe I've had that um, in the past as well. But anyway, I just kind of moved on. I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do about this. And side story here, we're going to veer off the path. Um, I had gotten some little gifts for Belle and Eve on Belle's birthday from Estee Lauder. Uh, my friend David told me about how they had these amazing like limited edition, I'm sure, um, Disney compacts. They are gorgeous. I'll have to insert a video clip, but I got one for each of them, and there's like a little powder inside. You know, that's that's a replaceable product, but more than anything, I just wanted them to have these little keepsakes, you know, that they could keep throughout their lives. I thought they were just absolutely stunning. Well, when I ordered those, I also got a free gift with purchase, and it came with this advanced night repair, and it also came with a few other products. Like, it was practically like a skincare sampler set. Um, the Renutrive, I think, Renutrive, I'm sorry if I'm not saying that right, but there was an eye cream, a face cream, and like a softening lotion. Probably not a toner, but some kind of essence or toner type product that you would swipe over clean skin, okay? So I had those things, and more recently, I've been working in everything. But even before I started using all the bits and pieces, I thought, I wonder if this, you know, would be a good thing for me. This is basically a serum. And after a week of using this, I swear, the texture on the forehead, it's, it's not there anymore. 
it's flattened out, it's smoothed out. The skin overall, texture-wise, very, very consistent and even. Now, I don't wanna promise that this is some kind of huge miracle worker. Maybe the stuff was on its way out anyway, but I feel like this worked really well for me. Then on top of that, I started using, you know, the other elements, because I thought, let's just test this whole little skincare regime for nighttime. So that's what I've been using. I very recently used up that Pharmacy Honey Grail oil. Uh, that I've been using for quite a long time, like well over a year now. Finally used that up, so I was kind of ready to branch out into something. And this is a product, this Advanced Night Repair. I know this has been around for a really long time, but I think I'm gonna be on the phone with David soon saying, can I order a full size of this stuff? Because I feel like it's played a role in the issues I was having because I really wasn't seeing any change. I was having like a stagnant problem there until I started using this. So um, it seems like the additional products have not hurt me either. Hey guys, this is editing me, much less glam than the me that was shooting that video oh, over 12 hours ago. Um, but I just wanted to insert here, if you're thinking about buying some Estee Lauder stuff, I think it would be amazing if you actually contacted my friend David and ordered it through him at Bergdorf Goodman. He is the uh, resident makeup artist there. And times are difficult for people right now who are working in retail. You could make a big difference, you know, by ordering through him or, you know, somebody such as him. Think about doing that as opposed to always placing that quick online order because um, times are certainly different right now. I think that would be a great thing to consider. Plus, not only could you order through him, but you also then gain access to um, all of his expertise and the many things he knows about Estee Lauder makeup, makeup in general, amazing sense of humor, wonderful personality. Please um, keep that in mind when you're uh, thinking about making your purchases. So anyway, guys, that's what I have to share this month for my favorites. It's not a ton, but I mean, it's the things that really stood out to me most right now. You might be saying, what about an eyeshadow palette? Well, I've been bouncing around like mad with eyeshadow palettes, trying to test different things for the holidays so I haven't really settled into one and used it over and over and over and over, you know what I mean? So more to come though on the look I have today and what I used to create that in an upcoming video. So a little tease there, but thank you guys so much for your time and I will see you very soon. Bye.